keep doing daily videos on YouTube, I need to raise my Patreon and Subscribestar income to a grand total of $200 a month. So if you're so inclined, help a chap out. Zang. Hello lovelies, once again we're reviewing, and um, once again it's for Lamentations of the Flame Princess. Uh, sorry this last week's been a bit slack, but uh, the clock is ticking on Whitechester, so I'm trying to concentrate on that rather than videos and other frivolities. So today we're reviewing, in a deadly fashion, for Lamentations of the Flame Princess, but compatible with pretty much any OSR game you care to mention, uh, written by Courtney C. Campbell. It's an adventure book, so we have all the usual problems of reviewing adventure books in that it's hard to review an adventure book without giving the story away, but I will attempt to do so. Um, I don't think it's a spoiler to say that it is deadly and it's about fashion. So yeah, this is the normal sort of 17th century-ish setting of most of the Lamentation stuff. It's weird, but it's not gribbly, stupid, gonzo weird. Uh, not that that's necessarily a bad thing in any case. This is pretty much an investigative adventure with a somewhat novel and interesting gribbly behind it all, and a, a lot of intrigue and investigation and social one-upmanship and so on going on as well. Um, the art quality is a step up from some of the other books that I have been reviewing recently. Uh, somewhat an exaggerated style in, in some cases, but that's, that's fine. Um, some of the deliciously horrible <laughs> or... Uh, outlandish art that we've also come to expect from Lamentations. I mean, what is going on with that wig? Uh, <clears throat> anyway, yes, so there's a mystery, there are issues, there are peculiar monsters uh, all tied up to do with, with fashion. Um, it's a fairly standard investigative sort of game there's nothing wrong with that at all whatsoever there's a sort of timeline of events there's some interesting locations with giant stone phalluses <laughs> in them amongst other issues um, there's dissolute nobility basically it hits all the kind of stuff that you would uh, want an adventure in this period to hit it has all those interesting factors to it. Uh, there are murders, there are monsters, uh, there's all those kind of aspects. There isn't really a lot I can say without ruining the adventure, um, which is unfortunate because um, it doesn't give me a great deal to talk about. It's about 50 pages, hardcover, again probably doesn't need to be necessarily, though it feels more in keeping with this book given the relative quality of the interior art. Um, it's a it's a decent diversion for probably a single game. It might fit in a con slot if you were were so inclined. Um, yes, there's his occult and orgy and decolletage partially uh, blocked by cow ears. That cow looks terrified. <laughs> She's probably one of the best illustrations of lamentations ever, I would think. It's a nice estate to explore um, with stone phalloi and boodles and um, peacocks, which make a horrendous racket. And there, I, like I say, I guess I'm not giving away too much to say that fashion is, is the monster. Um, it's not the first time I've seen this concept, but it, it's well executed here, and it is a rare and somewhat novel concept to have like a cloth golem or um, a dress elemental or something I, su I suppose you might call it um, and like I say it's, it's well executed here and 
it would be a nice import to bring into something like Raven Loft to bring some of the some of the horror and peculiarity back. Um, it wouldn't be out of place in Raven Loft at all. I would be tempted to bring these things into something like Strixhaven on prom night just to um, set the cat amongst the pigeons. <laughs> there. They don't seem that powerful or deadly. It's more in their abilities and the kind of um, problems that those abilities create for the players that you'll find the that you'll find the challenge and the and the juxtaposition of, of threat and the difficult choices and and so on. But in and of themselves, they don't feel like that powerful a threat. So I would say this is probably keyed down towards the lower levels. Probably no higher than third level if you want it to be a, a reasonable challenge uh, for your players. Uh, and that's really all there is to to say about it. It's a, it's a nicely presented little package. It's a nice little investigative adventure with a somewhat novel bad guy. Um, there's information in here that you could take and use in other games, in other settings, and have it work nicely. So, yeah, but I'm kind of umming and erring because I don't want to completely spoiler it, and that's always the problem, reviewing adventures. But this has some applicability beyond the one-off adventure that you might do with it. Yeah, there, there's ideas here, there's some details here. There's, there's things that you could take into other games. Okay, so, style. I can't really fault this one for style. Some of the illustrations are a little too exaggerated for my, cha uh, for my taste, sort of tipping over into, into parody, but overall I can't really fault the style of the piece. It's very well presented, very well done. Uh, so we'll give it a 5 out of 5 for style. In terms of substance, again, it's short for the production quality. I, I would like to see more more substance there. It is an adventure which always drags things down in terms of, of substance because there isn't so much that's reusable. Um, but unlike a lot of adventures, there is stuff that is more reusable here. So in terms of substance, let's say a 3. So that's eight out of ten, or four out of five. Uh, it's it's a good, worthwhile book with an interesting monster, interesting details, cults, shenanigans, and so on. Some interesting locations and so on that you can lift and use in other stuff. So somewhat recommended. Zang. Postmortem Studios, role playing games, and a lot more to die for post-mort.com